come to the work on energy first we see what is a work children this work is a common term which will come across with the means this word in every day but scientifically work is uh, different i can say that so children what is work done when the work is said to be done children work is said to be done only when the force applied on a body makes the body to get some displaced okay in that case only we can say that work is said to be done so work is a scalar quantity mathematically work is equal to product of work is defined as a product of force and displacement its si units are newton meter it is also called as joule its cg units are dyne centimeter it is also called as arg children 1 joule is equal to 10 power 7 arg or 1 arg is equal to 10 power minus 7 joule children it is not compulsory that always a body should be displaced in the direction of applied force some in some cases so force means body may not be displaced in the direction of applied force in that case how to calculate yes children in that case we can calculate here w is equal to fs cos theta what is the theta here theta is a angle between force and displacement children based on this only now we can understand the positive work done negative work done zero work done when the work done can be positive children if a body is displaced in the direction of applied force then work done is said to be positive in that case so angle between both are parallel means what angle between force and displacement is zero so cos zero theta is equal to zero degrees cos zero is one so f into s into one is one so w is w is positive example the work done by the if a body is falling freely so on this body gravity force will be acting in which direction downward direction so the work done by the gravitational force on the freely falling body is always positive clear fine now children if a body is displaced opposite to the direction of applied force which means what here for example here body is moving in this direction and force is acting in this direction then what happens that angle will be 180 degrees cos 180 is minus 1 so fs into minus 1 will be minus 1 minus fs so work done is negative example children now a ball is going vertical upward direction but gravity force will be acting downward direction so force is downward body displacement is upward so in this case the work done by the gravitational force on the body moving vertically upward direction is negative and children during the cricket match a fielder is trying to catch a ball in that case work done by the fielder is a negative this is a very important examination point of view and in example they might ask a question uh, what are the cases where work done can be zero if no force is acting work done can be zero force is acting but displacement is zero which case it is possible yes try to push the wall children you will be applying the force but you cannot make the wall to move right displacement is zero work done can be zero but third case very important force is acting body is displaced still work done will be zero in that case force must be perpendicular to the displacement in that case will theta is equal to 9 degrees cos 90 zero fs into zero will be zero so give a, let me give you one application here for example children here is satellite moving around the earth in this case the force will be towards the center centripetal force but displacement will be always along the tangent so this angle will be 90 degrees that's what in this case so what is the work done on the moving what we can say moon which is revolving around the earth is zero only because the what angle between the force and displacement at every point is 90 degrees only clear functionally now come to the yeah and how can you measure the work done by the gravitational force for example whenever you are lifting a body you are lifting the body against a what against a gravitational force in that case how can we measure the work done children mgh to what height you are measuring to what height you are lifting and what is the mass of the body and g value so mgh is our expression to calculate the work done by the gravitational force come to the power children what is the power the rate of doing work is called power children work depends on magnitude of force and the displacement whereas here power depends on work and time its a si units are joule per second it is also called as watt it can be even you can measure kilowatt megawatt gigawatt also cg units are arg per second how this si units cg units are related children 1 joule per second is equal to 10 power 7 arg per arg per second it's a very important and power also can be defined as a dot product of force and velocity or speed we can say that 
is it clear fine children so as i told you that power depends on two factors work and time power is proportional to the work done but inversely proportional to time which means what if the same work is done then we have to the time the person who can do the work in a less time is said to be having more power so based on this we can uh, expect some numericals also clear fine children and here so especially whenever we are measuring a power in terms of mechanical engineering uh, this uh, you know common unit which we which we can use what is that horsepower one horsepower is equal to 746 watts or 1 kilowatt is equal to 1.34 horsepowers children examination they might ask the difference between work and power how can you write first write the definitions okay now work definition power definition work uh, does not depend on time power depends on time the s unit of work is a uh, what we can say joule whereas the s unit of power is watt clear yes come to the energy what is the energy the ability to do the work if you have more energy you can perform more work if you have less energy you can perform less work its s unit is like work is a joule and the cg unit is arg only as we know that 1 joule is equal to 10 power 7 arg and we know that you know energy can be of different forms if you want to measure the heat energy there most will be using a calorie right so 1 calorie is equal to 4.2 joules or or 1 joule is equal to 0.24 calories and electron volt is a unit what it is a unit to measure the energy of subatomic particles one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joules and watt hour kilowatt hour so these units are used to measure the electrical energy one watt hour is equal to 3600 joules whereas one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 into 10 power 6 joules clear fine now comes the mechanical energy what is the mechanical energy you learn the energy possessed by an object by virtue of its state of rest or state of motion is called mechanical energy and a mechanical energy is of two types potential energy kinetic energy what is the potential energy children the energy possessed by an object by virtue of its state of position or a configuration is called potential energy potential energy is of two types gravitational potential energy elastic potential energy children whenever you are lifting objects against a gravity some work is done that work done is stored in the form of potential energy so called gravitational potential energy which can be measured by mgh formula children at infinity gravitational potential energy is zero it's very important and second one is elastic potential energy children whenever a body is deformed so during that process what will happen there will be change in the configuration so due to that so the body will gain some energy right so the energy gain due to the deformation what we can state of deform we can call it as a elastic potential energy comes to the kinetic energy children what is the kinetic energy the energy possessed by an object by virtue of its state of motion is called kinetic energy it is of three types translational kinetic energy vibrational kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy now we will see the relation between kinetic energy and the linear momentum at the same time we see the uh, work energy theorem and the different forms of energy and the loss of sorry law of conservation of energy hope it is copied chill and just copy this root tgh fine chill so let us come to the kinetic energy we know that the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion is called kinetic energy then what is the linear momentum the product of mass and velocity is called what children linear momentum and yet the relation between these two is kinetic energy is called p square by 2m or p is equal to square root of 2m into kinetic energy here we have three important cases children very very important if linear momentum remains constant then kinetic energy is inversely proportional to the mass which means what in this case children here lighter body will have more kinetic energy heavier body will have less kinetic energy but whereas if the velocity of the two bodies is same that is v is a constant then kinetic energy is proportional to mass which means what here heavier body will have more kinetic energy lighter body will have less kinetic energy in this case only if both bodies will have same kinetic energy then linear momentum is proportional to the square root of mass which means what more the mass more the linear momentum which means what here according to this heavier body will have more momentum than lighter body now comes to the work energy theorem let us say initially a body is moving with a velocity u 
then force is acting on the body in the direction of motion obviously its velocity increases simultaneously some work is done this work done only is equal to the change in its kinetic energy so in exam they may ask a question state the work and its theorem the work done what the work done on the body work done on the moving body in the direction of motion is always equal to the change in its kinetic energy or simply increase in its kinetic energy if a force will act in opposite direction decrease in its kinetic energy in exam they may ask a mathematical form of work and theorem so w is equal to half mv square minus half mu square now comes the conversions of energy children in our daily life we know very well so how the energy conversion will takes place for suppose in the loudspeaker what happened uh, electrical what uh, electrical energy is converted into uh, what we can say sound energy whereas microphone sound energy is converted into electrical energy photosynthesis light energy is converted into chemical energy in a bulb electrical energy is converted into light mostly light only but heat heater water heater will be there electrical energy is converted into heat energy and the cell in a use yes when the cell is in use chemical energy is converted into electrical energy if a cell is a charging in that case what children electrical energy is converted into chemical energy now come to the law of conservation of energy children what is the law of conservation of energy according to law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another form children if uh, there is only uh, energy exchange between potential to kinetic kinetic to potential then mechanical energy always remains constant provided there is no heat loss to the uh, there is no energy loss to the surroundings so the sum of the kinetic and potential energy always remains constant provided what children so there is no heat loss means what it only happens if there is no air friction in the absence of air friction only the sum of the kinetic and potential energy is always remains constant which means what mechanical energy remains constant in exam they may ask a question give any two examples where uh, mechanical energy remains constant two example freely falling body second one is simple pendulum so in the case of freely falling body just imagine that a body of mass is dropped from a height of h then children at a initial at a beginning at a you know at a, its initial position it doesn't have any velocity which means what at a point a it has only uh, uh, mgh means the mechanical energy is only due to the potential energy kinetic energy is zero but at a point c just it is about to hit the ground it has only kinetic energy means mechanical energy only in the form of kinetic energy and its potential energy is zero exactly half of its height i am talking half of its height half of its height what happens mechanical energy or potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy which is equal to the mg h by 2 now come to the simple pendulum children it's a oscillating simple pendulum at extreme positions it has only potential energy at a mean position i mean while it is crossing the mean position it has only kinetic energy so then how to find children in exam they may ask a question in order to raise a height of h what should be the velocity given here then according to law of conservation of energy energy at a point a must be equal to energy at a point c or b anything is okay so ea is equal to eb at ea only kinetic energy at b it has a potential energy just simple mass mass will get cancel and v is equal to square root of 2gh sometimes if a velocity v is given to what uh, height it is raised then children h is equal to v square by 2g this formula we can use and here in the case of freely falling body children in these two cases especially in this case they might ask you know it's a, a draw a graph uh, uh, which gives a relation between uh, you know energy to the height children so it's very important look at here so let us suppose it is a height let us a mechanical energy mechanical energy as height increase what will happen potential energy increase so this graph indicates potential energy whereas when height is increases simultaneously kinetic energy keeps on decreasing so this graph shows kinetic energy this exactly what children half of its height exactly the half of its height p is equal to mgh by 2 only ke is equal to mgh by 2 only but whereas here the total mechanical energy remains constant this is mgh okay children so these are the concepts of work power energy